today's lecture. My name is Ivo Franjic, and it's my pleasure to join you today. Um, I would like to thank very much the Russian Convention Bureau to give me the opportunity and to invite me to today's lecture. And hopefully within the next 60 minutes, I will be able to share with you some of my ideas, thoughts and experiences when it comes to destination development and marketing. I also would like to extend uh, special thanks to Christina, Karina, and Daniel, part of the Russian Convention Bureau team who helped and actually organized also today's lectures, also from a technical standpoint of view. So I hope it will work out nice and you will all hopefully enjoy those next 60 minutes. Uh, and accordingly, I would like now switching to my presentation. One second. And now sharing uh, my presentation with the first slide. Again, today's topic is the key to successful regional destination marketing, which is the collaboration, which I think, and I will highlight throughout the next 45 minutes, which I think is essential to any successful destination development and marketing in our industry, which I define as the business events industry. I know there have been a lot of definitions out there which are still in use. For example, the famous abbreviation MICE, M-I-C-E, which of course has still its validity, but on a more global and broader perspective, when we talk about our industry, we refer nowadays to business events. So what's in store for today? As already mentioned, uh, the presentation format and timelines, the first 45 minutes, I have the pleasure to present you food for thoughts, which in my opinion is sharing the knowledge experiences and my ideas I have about that. And please keep in mind, obviously uh, in general, the topic we have been chosen today for you is a rather complex one and has many aspects and facets and faces. Accordingly, what I will try to share with you over the next 45 minutes are really just kind of a, a teaser, a kind of a creating more interest to obviously then go further deeper into it, because as I said, the, top, uh, the topic itself is rather complex. The remaining 15 minutes, I hope we're going to have a conversation. I hope you have a lot of questions. And I also hope I have hopefully the right answers for it. So the last 15 minutes or so, we basically have reserved for you to be able to uh, follow up the questions, as I said, and accordingly uh, getting a little better understanding out of the 34, 45 minutes I have been presenting. What are the key messages and learnings today? That's how I have defined them. Number one is the definition destination. It's more than geography. Uh, number two, destination marketing is more than a single effort. And last but not least, talking about smart destinations, which is more than selling infrastructure and hospitality. On all the three subtopics, I like to dive in a little bit. I like to also present and showcase some best practices. I will hopefully also mention some, not worse practices, but less good practices and again, uh, highlighting wherever there is not the necessary collaboration in a destination, you are most probably not going to be as successful as those best practices I will show you later on today. Then let's jump right into it. And I would like to start with this uh, statement, the future is now. I know that we have been living uh, in a very unique circumstances. I think or globally, we still in different ways are trying to cope with the global pandemic of COVID-19. And of course, it has created a pressure. It has created a unique situation where we really don't have any uh, experiences from the past, how to cope with it. And accordingly, we have been now in different areas in the world trying to understand, uh, trying to find obviously the first steps of uh, solutions, and then taking a next step to look again into our future. Uh, and with the statement, the future is now, I just want to highlight that we have, because of the challenge, 
we are all facing nowadays, also great opportunities. And to make use of these opportunities, we need to start now. We need to start now to think ahead. We have the opportunity actually to define our own future when we're talking about the business events industry. And uh, there have been opportunities already uh, seen uh, bringing our industry hopefully on a so-called next level where we might be able to be better understood and uh, better heard as our industry being more than just part of tourism. But again, I will become later to it when we go through the three subtopics I just mentioned before. So let's start right into the first message, as I mentioned, just to repeat again, but go a little bit further into details by simply talking about the three subtopics. The definition of a destination is where we are having now the opportunity to rethink the purpose. And when I say rethink the purpose, I refer to really understand what the destination, what role the destination plays in our business events industry. It's much more than simply being the host, the geographical location, offering infrastructure, offering hospitality uh, elements for any future business events. Destination marketing is or has become more than copying and pasting successful examples in other parts of the world because every single destination per definition is unique. And I will come to it as well later. And last but not least, we believe, and I believe strongly, that the future belongs to smart destinations. Uh, not uh, necessarily the big ones, uh, the, those who have been the front runners for many years, successfully so, because they have done a good job, they have developed their destination to the needs of the market. But because of COVID-19, because of the very unique situation, basically the playing field has been leveled. Suddenly we have been forced, and again, if we are smart enough and see opportunities, we have the chance to really define destinations rather anew when it comes to the business events industry. Here are a few elements which I think we have to consider more so now than ever when we define destinations. As I said before, it is not only defined by geography. Of course, we still have borders, we still have regions who are defined, we still have cities who are defined by simply location, by geographical means. But more than that, it is important nowadays to understand that destination is also defined, for example, by the scope and scale. What I mean with that is obviously if you compare, for example, the Russian Federation as one destination compared to Luxembourg or maybe the Netherlands or Austria, where I'm calling in from today, obviously that plays a role how you define a destination. It is also defined by your assets and the influence a destination has. And that goes beyond now the purely tourism, the purely um, local infrastructure, accessibility and uh, hospitality aspect. It's about the economical influence. It's about a certain political influence, but of course, what kind of influence the society at large has in a destination and forms a destination. Then of course, it's the culture and traditions, which CS mostly are also represented in the hospitality aspect of a destination, the offering, when it comes to welcoming international travelers or business events participants. And mostly, and very importantly in the future, it will be more and more defined, but what kind of added value can the destination create for a specific business event? So what's the added value for an event owner or organizer to choose a destination, which goes as again, beyond any geographical means and definition. Secondly, second topic is the destination marketing per se. I know that we have been living the last decades in a very common pattern of selling a destination and selling a destination as a product. 
which is mostly defined again throughout the years. We all talked about it. It's about accessibility. It's about infrastructure. It's about the hospitality of a destination, which were kind of those products and services we wanted to sell to potential clients. I think nowadays it's much more become than selling. It has become really a, a true understanding for market, for the marketing of a destination. So it's not anymore about selling products and services. And here again, four or five highlights, which I think the future of destination marketing needs to consider. First and foremost, and that goes back to the very topic of today's lecture, is the right mix of public and private stakeholders. We have seen over the decades, I have to say, that wherever there was not the right mix of a public interest and the private engagement in a destination, there was no successful destination development and marketing after all. It is necessary to have that combined effort, those, that understanding for the collaboration of the public and the private side. One can, so to speak, not live without the other. And only if both really, both sides really jointly create a destination and market a destination, then you're going to be successful. It is, and that's probably also something you have heard before, it is definitely a long-term approach and commitment. And this has been always in many places the big challenge that obviously specifically the public and the private side thinking in different terms, in different time frames, And accordingly, also here, destinations who have had the courage and the chance to commit on a long term, which we're talking about five years to 10 years, 15 years, and be consistent in its destination development and marketing have been successful. Uh, being in Vienna, obviously, I have the the pleasure to live here and to work here. And I think this is also one recipe why Vienna has been one of the leading destinations as a city destination uh, for the last 15 to 20 years. Because here you have that understanding that only to joint efforts of the public side, of the local government, of institutions, of entities, and private enterprises, service providers, um, can create a destination successfully and marketing uh, marketed accordingly. And as I said at the beginning already, the two last points, it's all about now what are event organizers and owners really looking for. They don't look anymore for your infrastructure, accessibility or hospitality you offer. That is kind of, we call it, this is the hygienic factors a destination has to simply deliver. The majority of all event organizers internationally they take, they take that as a almost a granted fact. So actually what they're looking for is authenticity, a certain trust, the ability of a storytelling and creating emotion when choosing a destination. And again, as I said before, it's the value creation, which means what added value can a destination provide me with my event if I choose A over B, go to a country or a city or a region, because that's exactly what is a key factor now for having a successful event. So what I would like to do now is give you some examples that what I mentioned before, these new opportunities, these chances we have now, actually where we are forced to rethink through the very unique situation, is something I want to highlight by presenting you uh, short videos and also a few slides of three best practices. I have decided to choose uh, the winners of the ECA Best Marketing Award from 2017, 18, and 19, the last three years, because also highlighting that what we, what I've been trying to share with you up to now, it is not something COVID-19 has initiated or actually was the reasons for. No, it's actually much more a matter of really accelerating the process we are in at the moment. So it's not so much, it's not so much a matter of having the need to do it now. That is something which smart destinations, they have been out there before trying to understand 
that obviously that's the path, that's the journey they have to engage to be successful in the future. So I would like to step into uh, the first example, which is uh, presented by Flanders Meeting and Convention Center in Antwerp in Belgium. They were awarded the best marketing award in 2017. And also, again, they are highlighting when I mentioned before and I referred to the necessary collaboration in destination. It's actually a venue. It's a business events venue. It's not the so-called convention bureau who has initiated that marketing idea, but it adds to the destination marketing aspect. So again, collaboration is definitely the key. What I'm going to show you now is basically uh, a short part of the presentation of Ms. Anja Stars. She is the chief commercial officer so again, of the collaboration London is definitely uh, the key. What I'm, uh, uh, the venue in, in Antwerp. And she is kind of highlighting certain elements, which I th again, I think are essential to also understand why we're talking about a different way of marketing, why it is necessary to rethink, to rethink the purpose of a destination when it comes to being in the market, being a player in our business events industry. The project itself was called A Room with a Zoo. And the reason behind, very briefly, is basically what they decided to do, to build or rebuild a rather uh, brand new business events venue, but being incorporated in the famous historical Antwerp Zoo. So please join me and by listening in for a few minutes what uh, Ms. Anja Stars has to share. Because experts advise against it, lest we not be taken seriously. Until we checked with the market, listened to clients, who confirmed what we always felt to be true, that the suit is relevant. She makes all the difference. She really engages and makes us memorable. After all, what convention center has a zoo? And not just any zoo. The beautiful Antwerp Zoo is one of the oldest scientific zoos in the world. With her own... I 
I just see that we have here, I just get feedback that we have here some sound problems that unfortunately you cannot hear it as well as I do. Um, I honestly have to say, I'm trying to find out what the reason for that, but let's go back and see, it gets better. So from a scientific benefit to Salaboni, zoo became the heart and soul of our community, allowing for great storytelling to promote her many benefits, such as her lush green gardens, take a walk on the rocks and birds, or just make conversations, her fun evening programs, and early morning And that's where our campaign really took off, especially with Matsadi. As an ambassador, we had a compelling image to break through the promotional clutter to boost our presence in trade shows. The story doesn't end there. Because the real story is where does the money go? In our convention center, the money goes directly to the conservation work of the Antwerp Sea Foundation. We stand by the same. Antwerp's Zoo Foundation is a key player of conservation around the world. Recognizing how important corporate social responsibility is to our industry, we added a promise to our tagline, A Room with a Zoo. Instant CSR through conservation. An effortless, green solution for our clients. And a unique way for them to promote their event. 140 association leaders attended an exclusive seminar on the topic to really grasp the promise of conservation. Animated it with our signature banquet and animation and keynote speakers, including the phenomenal Jean Nelson, whom I met at the PICA Congress last year, and who connected culture and nature. With Matadi present always center stage in everything we did. And we got raving reviews on this event and other events we organized for a total of 600 PCOs and ADCs. As I said, Matadi was present in everything we did, all the elements of our marketing plan, as a print ad or a banner. So I'm quote cutting or blending out of it because that was for me somehow the key messages. Unfortunately, I just got uh, feedback from uh, Daniel that the sound was not as high and as good as possible. I apologize for that. We did a technical check before and it worked at that time. As we all know, we're living now in the virtual engagement age and we're still somehow grasping all the bits and pieces how to make it work. Um, but I anyway wanted to summarize basically the key messages uh, from uh, Mrs. Stars. At the end, it is something which you need to look for when you're talking about destination marketing now is a certain uniqueness and a certain smartness. She said, obviously, how does a small city of Antwerp, which is a very nice, beautiful historical city in Belgium, really compete or step up to the playing field in our industry, knowing that the giants, as she called it, of destinations are out there? So the idea was at that time, as I mentioned already into the deduction, to have really the possibility to think differently, to really get the opportunity to have somehow the possibility to showcase that with a different twist, with a different idea, with assets the city has, suddenly you can turn that really into also a message. Our industry, international clients are recognizing and you really make a difference when it comes to that and accordingly to that i have to say that from that part of fun i have to say it is really a great example how collaboration actually initiated not by a convention bureau per se but but a venue who wants to develop using assets in the destination collaborate in the destination and become visible and successful at the end the second part, uh, I'm hearing at the moment, sorry, just got also feedback, there's still some challenges with the sound. Um, my sound is fully up, so I cannot really say more than this. 
Uh, I hope I'm going to try to talk even louder. So hopefully you can hear me then also better. Uh, it's a second example. Uh, switching to the winner of the ECA Best Marketing Award in 2018 was Visit Scotland. And again here, with a different approach, with a, a thinking of collaborating, with uh, discovering the assets, assets and authenticity Scotland can offer, you create a marketing campaign which obviously makes a country, in this case, more visible, more likable, and obviously creating that necessary desire to discover it and by hopefully bringing a business event to that country. It's called Scotland, where ideas become legend. That has been a very successful campaign running in 2018. And I again have two very short videos to give you an insight what this campaign, campaign was about. I hope the sound is okay and you can follow. I'm delighted to announce the launch of our new digital campaign, Legends. This is a first for Visit Scotland and the wider mice industry. The campaign will focus on Scotland's long-established reputation as a centre of innovation and pioneering invention. This will transform the way that Scotland is sold to the discerning conference market globally. We will amplify the reasons why somebody should come to Scotland with their meeting. This will focus on Scotland's incredible academic credentials, the history of bold and innovative thinking, and all of the inventions that Scotland has brought to the world and continues to bring. This passion for innovation is in Scotland's soul. We have world leaders in industries ranging from computer gaming to medicine, engineering, to robotics. These are the stories that this campaign will highlight to the world. Quite simply, Scotland is the place where ideas come to life. Ideas enable change. Business events create ideas. And in Scotland, ideas become legend. So this was an example, and again, I hope the sound is getting better now, uh, for showcasing how in that case a country can really tap into all the assets they have. In this specific case, it was the scientific world in Scotland, and it really showcased what kind of impact business events can have, both by being attracted because of those certain scientific knowledge, universities, other researchers, in a, in a country in that case, and also by bringing business events into Scotland, into the country to emphasize, to get even better and advance in their research, in their knowledge, in the uh, innovations they want to create. 
So really it is a uh, almost perfect match. And I think this is also what we have been talking for quite some time within the business events industry. When we talked about beyond tourism, this is a perfect example where you can create a destination marketing message by using assets, by collaborate within your destination and with the attracting of business events, you develop your destination further. So currently, it is something which we need to really think and do when it comes to this. So my, uh, my opinion about this, sorry, I got distracted, I got a WhatsApp message here again saying that the sound is okay now. Uh, coming back to it now, as we all live, uh, Scotland, where ideas become legend, is for me a second best practice when it comes to destination marketing and the new ways of thinking to become smart when you talk about your destination. Last but not least, the third one, Again, a completely different approach, but again, a very smart one. It's about the destination Estonia and the convention bureau there initiated a campaign, an idea, and got awarded in 2019, the ICA Best Marketing Award for their campaign called Go Wild, Choose Estonia. And the picture they have been using is one of the main um, to, uh, uh, motives shows again exactly how that goes. So here we go. Let's take a look into this time. No video, but a few slides I will guide you through to again highlight the campaign, the smartness, and obviously, hopefully, presenting a certain different way of how you approach destination marketing, specifically considering being a, quote, small destination as Estonia is. This is not a judgmental. It's just a fact that you have those uh, smaller destinations which can go far and be successful when it comes to destination marketing. So the campaign itself was called Go Wild Choose Estonia. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to create really a storytelling possibility when it comes to the destination per se. That means you have obviously to think a little bit different, to be a little bit, how can I say, uh, smart and in innovative in how you create your story more than anything. You know you have assets, you know what your strengths are, but it is also a matter how you build the story, how you tell the story, how you distribute the message. And this is something which I think Estonia did really well and accordingly well deserved the um, Best Marketing Award 2019. Let me get you through. So their question, simple question was, how do I get clients to choose Estonia and how to be visible and attractive? And they based it basically on this campaign with a playful slogan and created new fresh destination approaches where we obviously considered the asset of a country as being considered wild. Wild not because crazy, but wild is because of their nature, of their uh, country as a such to discover and having the asset of having untouched nature, having opportunities and possibilities to incorporate that asset of nature into their destination offering and obviously into the destination marketing message. The concept, rather simple, as already Ms. Stars said also, when she was talking about building a concept, building a, a destination marketing campaign, it is about the simplicity. It's not about thinking, you know, around the, around the corner too much, but just approach it in a very simple and very authentic way. As you can see here, the main points were increasing awareness and visibility, enhancing the image of cool, fresh, lively destination, proactively communicate, authenticity, again mentioned, creating and creating engaging content for digital marketing, and obviously based on that, tell stories with a personal touch. That was the defined targets they had, obviously, with any destination or any marketing campaign. Hopefully, everybody also defines targets to be at the end measurable and comparable to the results. 
and again, rather simple targets, uh, achievable targets, but still ambitious, considering again, we're talking about a global competition, we're talking about extremely strong European competition when it comes to destinations. So I think this is also a very important part, as we all know, in defining a destination marketing campaign. Action step number one. They were bold enough and said, we changed the focus of our marketing message. We go away from selling our infrastructure, our accessibility, our offerings, our hospitality, whatever is part of that selling message and really turn it into a marketing message. And using inspiration and curiosity instead. And it comes back to storytelling, which leads to engagement. They, of course, also had to consider from the very beginning on when you create a destination marketing or in general, a marketing campaign, you need to also deliver the promise at the end. So one thing is to promise something. The second thing, the second important step is to fulfill that promise. So what they had to go out there and look into the destination needed the collaboration of every stakeholder involved in our industry to really turn, transform existing products into that new approach of enjoyable, unique, memorable, authentic, entertaining experiences. So it was not about the square meters or the numbers of hotel rooms or the flight connections or name it, the wonderful culture or the food or whatever it might be. Every destination obviously is very proud about. It is really about that emotional, authentic engagement. And instead of selling products, you sell memories. Inspiration story is combined with a powerful visual content. That obviously is important when you talk about today's uh, digital marketing strategies. It's all about visuals. It's all about we like to consume with the eye. You have been seeing over the last decades the changes of how social media has uh, adapted, uh, evolved, and changed to become a very, very visual tool or very vis visual in its way by offering, obviously, the right images which creates much stronger connection, curiosity, and engagement than simple words. And you obviously have to play in all different channels with the same message, the same story. And this is again what I come back to uh, the overall topic of today, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Here again mentioned the important part that all partners came together of different fields, and you see here also mentioned university, the cities, other stakeholders involved in providing services and products to be really unified in this strong message. For example, just three examples here, dinner in the bog, per se maybe not something which is totally new because I think every destination can offer a certain different dinner setting in the wild in that case or in very unique venues and places, but you tell a story about it. A secret event on a secluded island. Again, the recipe, the parts for the recipe, many destinations I think have but it's how you put the recipe together and how you present it as an experience and an emotion rather than a product with certain operational criteria and so forth. And of course, they're using people because again, and also Mrs. Starr said in her brief presentation, it's about us, it's about we people, we are, and this is also why we are and we'll have the future with our business events industry because we simply want to connect. We want to engage. We want to meet. There's also, by the way, a reason why we, I think all we are looking forward again to the possibility when we all can meet live again, we will use continue to use all the virtual engagements like we have today, but it doesn't replace that live moment. And very briefly, some remarkable results. 
they increased their RFBs requests for proposals by 60%. They had an increase of 25% website visitors driven through all the social media engagement. They had a high number percentage of increase in, in their major social media channels. And I think this is the most stunning result of that campaign. They increased their membership of the convention bureau by 25 percent so suddenly you engaged with your stakeholders you got them on board you made them really partners in developing uh, the destination and creating a destination marketing campaign and suddenly you increase your resources you increase your voice you become suddenly one voice and one message and just because of, quote, one campaign, the Estonian Convention Bureau increased their membership by 25%. And last but not least, and again, collaboration, the national uh, airport, for example, one partner adopted their idea go wild and suddenly they came out with their own campaign talking about the nature talking about the wildest nature, just as an example. So even here you have an example and you set examples for other partners in your destination to follow sweet, to follow your footpath, to create together again that story for your joint journey. So here again, the conclusion of the third example, best practice, go wild, choose Estonia, entry was submitted to the EKBMA, and it showcased that a bit of creativity, changing the perspective and thinking outside the box suddenly, and she calls it a smaller convention bureau, could become an out, uh, could create outstanding results. So concluding these three best uh, practice examples, and I have five minutes left, four minutes left in the presentation. Um, this is for me a good sign, a good example that we don't also need to reinvent the wheel now just because suddenly we are facing a situation and we have to try to find a way out of it. Kickstarting, recovering our industry. Um, it is something the main parts of the recipe, they have been there. It's not something completely new. So what it is now is it accelerates this process of rethinking the purpose, accelerating the process of stop copying and paste, and accelerating the process that the smart destination is going to be the future winners. And that is my last uh, topic of today, the third one, just again, a topic which is actually very not complex, but very can go very much into details. I just really want to scratch here the surface. And what we have done here with United we have, uh, together with the help of Gerrit Jessen, a good friend and colleague of ours, who we kind of gave that smart definition or the smart expression a certain life. And smart, the gentleman on the right, everybody knows, uh, we would consider him being a smart one. Um, so for me it is, or for us it is here to obviously to better understand what it means to be smart when it comes to our industry. And I know we have been talking in the tourism industry already for some time about smart cities, but that's a kind of a different smart than we in the business events industry should define for the future. And you can see here the five attributes, sustainable, mindful, agile, reputable, and transformational. And again, if we keep that in mind, I think definitely destinations who have the possibility, who have also the courage, of course, to take that next step and move to the next level, as I said, kind of getting uh, independent uh, of our tourism world as such. We all know we are still relying on them to provide us, of course, with the basic, with the hygienic factors, with the hardware in every destination, hotels and venues, and also experiences partly. But we are much more than that. 
we are actually, I think, one of one of co-driver of developing a destination and obviously creating by doing that, creating also that return of investment by bringing business events into our destination. So I want to finish my presentation here uh, with a very simple quote, which actually I re-adopted a little bit. And that says for me a lot, because all you need is a plan and a roadmap and the courage to define your destination. And I think you will have a bright future in our industry. That kind of conclu uh, concludes now my presentation, but I apologize if there have been some sound issues and maybe we can now also look into the aspect of uh, Q and A's to maybe repeat or emphasize again some of the statements uh, which you have seen, but maybe not as well heard during the video times. Uh, so I'm happy to have now the next 15 minutes of Q and A's. Um, Christina is so kind to forward me those Q and A's or questions, the Q's, the A's, hopefully I have, to see how we can provide more in-depth knowledge or answers to what it might be. I think I have here already one received, sorry, I'm, I'm multitasking here, but different uh, WhatsApp messages Christina was sending to me. There is one question I would like to read to you, of course, and then provide hopefully some input and some smart answers to it. Uh, Ivo, do you consider to work with projects that mostly has not so good image? Do you think that destination countries with some problems like air pollution, economical stability, or political crisis could be attractive for tourists? Very good question. I think this is where a lot of the new destinations, we call them up and coming destinations, obviously have that challenges. How can I use the business events industry to step by step improve and sometimes even change the perception the world has about our destination, whether it's a city, a region, a country. And I think I always like to call that if we again do it smartly, the business event industry can become the window to the world where people who obviously start to come to your destination, not as tourists, Yes, also as tourists, but mostly also as um, participants of business events can be that multiplier, can definitely create that change of mindset, change the perspective, and again, give the destination that necessary initiative, that necessary energy, that necessary content to also develop further. So it's a little bit like a catch-22 situation the more a destination becomes uh, visible and recognized by its true assets and possibilities, the more events come into the destination. And the more events come into the destination, the more content is created, the more opportunities destinations have. So it kind of, it really is that uh, vicious circle, if I want to call it, and vicious is maybe the wrong word, but a positive, has definitely a positive input. So I think definitely, yes, I think every country in the world is dealing with perceptions uh, now and then is trying to correct maybe of wrong perception, the global media uh, create uh, and they currently create pictures in, in the heads of people. So I think definitely is something where destinations, as I said, up and coming. I look only here uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, and also Russia, the Russian Federation is a great example. How have you done it already? Look at, obviously, Russia is not one country, as I said before, it's not one geography. Uh, it's a, a combination of regions. You see already how successful, obviously, some city and regions are working and others are still in the process of starting that. So I think, yes, it can be done. The only key or two key elements, again, to repeat, I'm sorry to be so insisting on that, is you need to find the collaboration in your destination. You cannot do it alone. And you have to be patient. Rome, they say Rome was not built in one day, uh, another destination, but it is, it takes time. It is not something, and again, uh, Anya Stas mentioned it to her, refer again her to one of her statements. You're talking about three, four, five years, sometimes even 10 years. So it is not an easy job, 
but it definitely can be done. I hope that was sufficient as an answer. Then I have another one here. Wow, they are coming in here. Now I'm getting really busy. Um, let's see, we have still 10 minutes left. Uh, another question, good day. Could you please tell us which events do you think would be in streamlined trends for regional destinations? Okay, good question again. Um, I think, first of all, yes, we're looking at to, into the different formats of events now. And obviously, I mentioned already before, this abbreviation MICE, M-I-C-E, for us, for me, is defining this format. The meeting, incentive, conference, congress, then they call it those events. Basically, I think destinations, uh, depending on what stop of their journey they are, how far they have been developing, certain formats are easier than others. We see a lot that obviously many, again, new destinations coming onto the international playing field will probably not host a 5,000 event Congress format within the first year of being active. I think it is more the experience events, which are more, we call it the live communication, which are either corporate sided events initiated and run by corporations. There might be incentive, roadshows, product presentations, smaller conferences, where this is where you get your first feeling for the international business events market. And I think this would be more the road to take. But of course, over the time, because again, you create a reputation, uh, maybe also quote the bigger events, like formats like congresses, conferences, conventions, big international meetings and so forth, will come to your destination. Uh, so I think this is a little bit where we see at least the trend in many destinations that you start with the simply of smaller events when it comes to infrastructure, but very strongly on experiences because these people become your messengers. When they leave, they say, wow, you know, I mean, I find the hotel was great, good, wonderful, and the food was great. But, you know, the experiences I had in this destination, like Estonia, I really, you know, went wild because that was really unique. I never expected it. So maybe that's a little bit also uh, an answer to your question. And off we go. We continue. The next question here, I'm scrolling through. Wow, we could go another hour with all the questions you have, which is wonderful. I'm always happy to help and share. Next question here, it's very interesting again. Very good questions, I like that, challenging me. What do you think would be the main difference in marketing instruments used for regional destinations and for big cities? Okay, when we talk about tours, instruments, I think in general, you have nowadays obviously a, a certain a form of choosing up-to-date modern tools to reach and to engage your target audience. And that's pretty much everywhere sim similar to it. So it's the tool, you have obviously the, the virtual engagement side, social medias and others, you still have, and hopefully back again, the face-to-face, -face, as we call it, the live engagement, when, where there's going to be still certain classical trade shows, fairs, or more personalized, more custom tailored, like site visits, like other events, you're going to present your destination. Um, I think the, the difference, again, is in big cities or regions, it really depends on the assets you have. Again, go back and look at your region, look at your city, what are really, so to speak, these unique moments? What are my assets? Maybe this in science, maybe this in other industries, which you also can tap into. Science, like Scotland, Visit Scotland showed, is just one element. There are maybe so many others. So I think it's, it's not the question of what is the unique and perfect match of instruments. It's again about the story. It's about the content. And out of this, you create your channels. You choose your messages. And then obviously at the end, your message will be heard successfully. Again, I hope I answered it a little bit or tipped into. Let me see. We still have five minutes to go. Good. This should be, I try to be shorter in my answers. So I hope they can still do two or three answers. Um, 
Here is Ivo, answer my question, please. Do you consider the collaboration of culture and business to promote the destination effective? Do you think cultural events are a promising tool for promoting a destination? Have you ever participated in such projects? Answering your last question, me personally, I have not participated in it, but yes, definitely. That's what we talked about before. What are the definition for destination? What is your cultural heritage? What is your cultural asset you have? And I know of many examples uh, where cities or countries who have a strong brand of cultural recognition globally. Again, I come back to Vienna because it's closest, obviously, is my home. I remember uh, they did a campaign uh, to use the annual uh, a Sylvester or New Year's concert of the Philharmonic Orchestra in Vienna, which is broadcasted worldwide, to create special moments of doing outdoor events in destinations around the globe where it was possible. For example, they used the Sydney Opera House as a projection screen of showing a live stream of the concert of Vienna. Uh, there are smaller elements. You can use all the cultural assets and, and brands you have, and definitely it is a wonderful enhancer of creating this engagement. Because we are, again, we are people, we want to experience, we are open for positive emotions. And so culture can be a, a very, very strong enhancer and can be definitely um, used to promote a destination. So I think, what do we have here more? I get here. Here another again coming back to what I said, the, the still relationship obviously we business events industry has with tourism. The question is, does industry to industry tourism could be driver for the destination marketing strategy and one of the part of local business event industry? For example, if we talk about emerging destinations. Yes, of course. Again, as much as we want to be more clear with our message towards those who are our stakeholders, whether it's the public side or the private side, the business events industry is more than tourism. We are not saying that we don't want to be part or we don't want to, we don't recognize the relationship we have with tourism. So at the end, yes, of course, any destination, any emerging up and coming destination needs that strong foundation of a development in tourism. Because not only is the supply side, the infrastructure, the accessibility, the cultural hospitality, obviously also part of our recipe in the business events industry. It's clear. So only with a good structured tourism, you can build also your own business events industry. I always like to call, we are kind of a third cousin of tourism. And again, I mentioned it before, these elements of tourism development are our hygienic factors to become a destination internationally recognized, accepted, and hopefully create interest in the global world of business events. So definitely there needs to be that relation. I think I have to conclude now because I'm running out of time. I once again appreciate very much uh, your attention, your participation, listening to. I apologize again for some problems with the sound we had uh, during the presentation. I will learn out of it as well because I think every single virtual engagement nowadays we do as a participant or as a presenter in this case by me, you always learn something what you can do better next time. Uh, I also want to close basically by uh, saying that what we have seen now, this acceleration in the virtual side of our events, of course, they will be also there whenever we have come out of the COVID-19 pandemic health crisis, because again, it has simply accelerated the way we engage. So in the future, business events will be both. Business events will be part of a certain a life engagement, enhancing it to virtual means. And as we are all like this, I think it will even emphasize more the importance of business events or the business events industry in destination development and marketing. I wish you all a wonderful Friday afternoon. 
a happy weekend, hopefully sunny one, and I hope to see you sometime soon again, when we all allowed again to not only travel, but to encounter, to engage with a certain life-to-life -life element, face-to-face -face element, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.